Somewhere in the Indian Ocean lies a nation of islands where the waves have erased footprints, but not memory. A place where the winds forgot the names of the travelers, but their blood still speaks. The people of these islands carry within them fragments of India, shadows from Arabia, and something else, something no one expected. They share DNA with distant lands, yet they are like no one else. How did genes from deserts and highlands end up in coral atolls? Why do their mother's bloodlines tell one story, and their fathers another? This is not a story of empire. This is not a story written in stone. This is a story encoded in flesh. And what it reveals should not exist. For over 3,000 years, the Maldives has floated at the crossroads of history, not as a conqueror, but as a witness. The first settlers came from the south, Dravidian mariners, Sinhalese voyagers, bringing with them more than language or gods. They brought the maternal legacy of South Asia. In the cells of their daughters, we find the ancient markers, mitochondrial haplogroups M, R, U, passed silently from mother to child, generation after generation. Today, nearly every Maldivian still carries this inheritance. 99% of their maternal DNA points to South Asia. That story is clear. But then the silence breaks. In the Y chromosomes of Maldivian men, a different tale emerges, one that leads west. Haplogroups like J2, L, R1A1A appear, lineages rooted not in India, but in Arabia, Persia, even Central Asia. One in every four paternal lineages does not belong to the Indian subcontinent. It belongs to travelers, to traders, to strangers. Men who arrived with the monsoon winds stayed just long enough to leave a child and vanished with the tide. Their names are forgotten, their faces lost, but their presence is permanent. And yet, something even stranger begins to appear. Despite centuries of contact, despite waves of foreign men, the maternal DNA remains untouched. South Asian. Singular. Rooted. How? Why? Why do the women's genes never shift? Because here women never left, and men were always passing through. The Maldives was matrilocal, a world where daughters stayed, inherited, carried the memory of the land in their veins, while men were temporary. And so the genome was carved by culture, by silence, by who stayed and who moved on. Out here, between the winds and waves, each island was its own world. Not a single nation, but dozens of tiny realms, each separated by salt, silence, and time. And in each one, the DNA tells a different version of the same beginning. There are islands where a single man's blood defines the future, his Y chromosome, copied, carried, repeated, until it becomes indistinguishable from the place itself. This is the founder effect, and in the Maldives, it speaks loudly. In some atolls, male genetic diversity collapses into simplicity, as if one man walked ashore and every lineage after him carried a shadow. We see it in the reduced variety of YSDR markers, signatures passed only from fathers to sons, fewer patterns, fewer branches, a tree with one thick root and no others. But the maternal branches are different. They are wider, richer, more tangled as if the roots of women reached further into time than men ever could. This contrast isn't natural. It's not biological randomness. It's historical structure. It's cultural design carved into flesh. Because while men moved between islands, women stayed. Generations of mothers handed down the same mitochondrial code, unbroken, uninterrupted, unmoved. And so, the male lines fractured, bottlenecked repeated while the maternal ones persisted like whispers too stubborn to die. Isolation magnified it, each island like a petri dish, sealed by ocean walls, where drift did the work of time. Rare genetic markers, ones you might never see twice in the mainland, became common in these corners of coral and sand. Not because they were better, but because they were alone. In some communities, these unusual variants weren't just preserved, they defined the population. They became identity, inheritance, inevitability. And this is what makes Maldivian DNA more than a mosaic. It makes it a collection of living fossils. 
Every island doesn't just tell a story. It tells its own story, written in alleles, not alphabets. The genetic substructure is subtle, but real, invisible to the eye, but impossible to ignore in the code. And that substructure tells us something few ever notice, that blood can remember boundaries long after maps forget them. DNA doesn't argue. It doesn't exaggerate. It doesn't forget. It simply waits, buried in bone, passed through blood, until someone finally listens. And when scientists finally listened to the DNA of Maldivians, they heard something no one had ever heard before. Not echoes from known migrations, not familiar markers found in Indian ports or Arab trading towns, but whispers of haplotypes that existed nowhere else on Earth. Within mitochondrial haplogroup R, long known across South Asia, a strange sequence appeared, 16187T, 16241T, 16319A, 16342C. It was found in multiple Maldivians, but in no one else. Another sequence emerged, 16086C, 16209C, 16256T, again only here. These weren't just mutations, they were signatures, genetic handwriting, scrawled across time, that spelled one word, isolation. These variants didn't arrive from the outside, they were born here, forged in silence, amplified by drift, and preserved by lineage. Each island became a vault, each family, a guardian of a code that never spread beyond the reef. Even more shocking. Twenty-six samples couldn't be assigned to any known maternal branch. They didn't match any global reference. Science paused. Maps failed. The data suggested what few dared to believe, that the Maldives had created its own lineages, its own microevolution. This is not legend, not folklore. It is the statistical language of genomes, and it spoke of deep genetic sovereignty. And yet, the strangeness didn't end there. From the east, Barely a whisper. From Southeast Asia, the genetic trail is faint, almost non-existent. No maternal lineage from the Malay world. No strong signal from Indonesia. Why? The geography suggests they should be here. But the DNA says otherwise. Whatever forces shaped these islands did so with unexpected hands, and left behind evidence written not in stone or script, but in sequence. Every nation tells stories. But only a few have stories so strange, so improbable, that even their chromosomes raise questions. The Maldivians are one of them. In the story of humanity, migration is usually told through footsteps, but in the Maldives, it's told through mothers. Here, the women were not wanderers. They were anchors, living memory embedded in lineage. Generations passed in the same village. Daughters raised daughters under the same coconut trees. Names changed, faces faded, but the maternal line stayed whole. Men, on the other hand, were always in motion. Sailors, traders, strangers with unfamiliar accents and temporary promises. Some arrived with the wind, stayed for a season, and disappeared into history. But they left behind a Y chromosome, quietly folded into the future. This is the legacy of a matrilocal society. A rare structure where marriage meant moving in with the wife's family, not the other way around. In this system, women define stability, men define transience, and the genome reflects it, with maternal DNA showing deep continuity, while paternal lineages shift like tides. Across the islands, mitochondrial sequences remain remarkably consistent, proof of women staying rooted. But the paternal signatures are scattered, uneven. Fragments of distant origins that never became dominant. No West Asian mtDNA. Almost no Southeast Asian maternal influence. The mothers were local. Always. And yet haplogroup J2, a clear marker of West Asian ancestry, thrives in the Y chromosomes. A genetic echo of men from Arabia or Persia who never fully replaced, only blended. These weren't invasions. These were quiet assimilations. Encounters that happened not through conquest, but through connection. And the women, they held the genetic line steady. Through generations of marriages, births, and burials, 
they preserved a maternal thread that never unraveled. This isn't just biology. It's culture fossilized in the body, the story of a people where identity passed through the womb. And what makes it extraordinary is that the genome tells us this, even when history books do not. The structure of Maldivian society shaped its very DNA, not metaphorically, literally. And while the world changed around them, dynasties rose and collapsed, religions shifted, borders redrew, the maternal code endured, silent and unbroken. Some genetic stories are told through survival, others through suffering. In the Maldives, one of the loudest genetic voices comes not from ancestry, but from illness. Thalassemia, a blood disorder carried in silence, affects more Maldivians than almost any neighboring population. Nearly one in six carries the mutation, not by choice, not by fate, but by history. Its presence is not random. It didn't emerge here. It was brought by voyages, by unions, by human movement across oceans. And its roots trace back to unexpected places, the Middle East, North Africa, even the Iberian Peninsula, Portugal, Algeria, the Red Sea coast. Their connection to these islands is not obvious in language or architecture, but the genome remembers them. Scientists have found thalassemia mutations in Maldivians that match distant populations separated by thousands of miles and centuries of silence. This isn't a coincidence. It's a breadcrumb trail left by ancient travelers whose names were never recorded, whose faces were never carved in stone. Their only legacy is molecular, a mutation passed from parent to child, carried through generations, surviving shipwrecks, storms, and empires. These genetic echoes tell us that the Indian Ocean was never empty. It was alive with traffic, with contact, with consequence. The mutation is more than a medical statistic. It's a living memory of forgotten paths, of people who once crossed these waters and became part of the archipelago's story without ever leaving a trace in the sand. And unlike trade goods or languages, mutations don't vanish. They embed. They persist. Every cell that carries thalassemia in the Maldives is a relic, not of weakness, but of contact. A record of bodies meeting across boundaries. A witness to the invisible exchange that shaped more than just culture, it shaped chromosomes. And that's the paradox of isolation. Even the most secluded places carry within them the signature of strangers. Not in their flags, not in their surnames, but in the structure of their blood. Some stories fade, some are erased, and some are buried too deep to be spoken, but not too deep to be sequenced. In the Maldives, history doesn't just survive in architecture or myth. It hides in molecules no eye can see. There are lineages here, barely present, almost imperceptible, that whisper of lands far from these waters. A handful of maternal markers suggest faint connections to East Africa. Others, weak but real, point to the Malay world. But there are no songs in the islands that mention them, no legends passed down, no oral histories that trace their path. Whatever ships brought those ancestors, they vanished without sound. And yet, the genome records them, soft signatures beneath dominant haplotypes, like embers beneath the ash. They do not dominate the Maldivian identity. They do not define it. But they are part of its construction, quiet bricks in a foundation no one ever knew was there. That is the genius of DNA. It writes history where humans have forgotten to. You will not hear these names in classrooms. You will not see these migrations in ancient maps. But your cells remember, long after your stories forget. This faint East African imprint? It could have come from a single enslaved woman brought across the sea who bore a child that bore a name that bore a future. The Southeast Asian trace? Perhaps a sailor from Sumatra? Perhaps a mother from Java? Their memory erased from language, but imprinted in sequence. The beauty of this discovery is not its clarity. It is its ambiguity. Because every rare allele, every unexpected branch, every low-frequency haplotype is a door to someone whose name is lost, but whose impact lives on. In this way, the Maldives is more than an isolated nation. 
It is a mirror of forgotten passageways, reflections of people who arrived quietly, lived briefly, and were remembered not by monuments, but by molecules. And in this silence, we hear the loudest truth of all, that even the faintest gene is louder than history's forgetfulness. The ocean forgets. It washes away bones, homes, names. But the body, the body remembers. Across these scattered islands, where time drips slow as tide water, the truth never needed a storyteller. It had the genome. While kings ruled and vanished, while dialects twisted and crumbled, the sequences stayed, humming beneath the skin like a song without lyrics. No scripture recorded the moment an African mother gave birth on a shore not her own. No historian noted the Persian sailor's final night in a village that wasn't on any map. But they existed, not in ink, in inheritance. Every heartbeat in the Maldives carries traces of people the world never saw coming. Ancestors who crossed oceans without leaving footprints, only code. And the code never lies. It doesn't glorify. It doesn't exaggerate. It simply exists stubborn, raw, and undeniable. In a world obsessed with borders, bloodlines ignore them. They flow across centuries without visas, carried in cheekbones, in illnesses, in the curve of a child's jawline. This isn't just science. It's identity carved by silence. So the next time someone says the Maldives is just a tourist destination, remember, beneath every beach is a burial, and within every living Maldivian is a map no one can draw by hand. What else do our bodies remember that we've forgotten to ask? What other islands, lost to history, still speak through flesh and frequency? Tell us in the comments, which moment made you rethink how deeply the past lives inside us? And if this story moved you, share it. Not because it's viral, but because it's true. We often imagine time as a river, but in the Maldives, time is buried deep in bone, waiting to be read, not flowed through. DNA is not memory. It is something deeper, more loyal. It carries the past like a secret it refuses to let die. The genome doesn't measure time in centuries. It measures it in replications, in molecular edits passed on without ceremony. While history needs a witness, genetics needs only continuity. Somewhere, in the heart of a young islander, a mutation whispers a name never spoken aloud. A fragment of someone who lived, loved, disappeared, and yet still lingers. What we call uniqueness is often just survival through silence. Maldivian DNA is not unusual because it's isolated. It's extraordinary because it remembered when everyone else forgot. Science will catch up. Eventually. It always does. But the genome is already there, a living document, older than any archive, more honest than any chronicle. Every cell is a timestamp, every sequence a signature, and in the Maldives, the signatures are ancient and still glowing. Long after voices fall silent, long after stories are buried beneath waves, something still speaks. It does not shout. It does not ask to be heard, but it's always there, pulsing beneath skin, quiet as breath. The genome never forgets. And in these islands, that genome has seen what no eye remembers, arrivals with no names, departures with no trace, unions with no witness but time. It carries the footprints of those who crossed oceans not to conquer, but to exist briefly, deeply, and then vanish into legacy. What makes Maldivian DNA so unique is not its composition, it's its clarity. Clarity born of stillness, of separation, of histories that folded in silence, but unfolded in blood. Every strand here is a page, every mutation a message from someone who may never be known, but must never be forgotten. And as science unravels what the islands protected, the final echo belongs not to kings or chronicles, but to the code. It is not a question of where we come from. It is a question of what in us refuses to leave. 